Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Aaron. And I'm Josh. And today we're talking about blind tastings. This is how we do it. This is how we do mm -hmm. it. Mm. Welcome to the channel, bringing real world content to the real world whiskey consumer. Today we're talking about blind tastings. We're gonna talk about how we do them. This is gonna be a little bit of a deep dive of behind the scenes to our system. Yep. We're also gonna talk about how you can do them yourself. But first, Aaron, how are you doing? What are you drinking? I am fine. We just did a head to head. You just filmed a head to head. I filmed a head to head with George T, with Stag Jr. and Booker's and they hurt my feelings. <laughs> And I'm really sad and I feel like I just need something comforting. So I'm drinking my old standby bullet rye. Old faithful for her. It's just like mashed potatoes and bourbon form. It's just comforting <laughs> and it just makes me happy. So I am I needed this, so I'm good. Otherwise, how about you? Well, I mean, I was doing all right, but now I feel like I kind of want some mashed potatoes. So. I know. Oh, <laughs> mashed potatoes. Always, always yes to mashed potatoes. And I'm drinking something that is pertinent to our blind tasting topic today. So what that is, is a Russell's Reserve private barrel selection. This was done by a local group, a local bourbon group mm -hmm. to us here in Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville Bourbon Social Club through Arnold's Meat and Three, which if you ever come to Nashville is a fantastic restaurant to go to. It's a Nashville staple. It's a Nashville staple. Yeah. Very unpretentious. It's got this cool, you know, tater label here. For all the nerdy people out here, this is a Warehouse S Floor 5 bottle, which not a lot of Warehouse S picks get out of Wild Turkey. Mm -hmm. So, this is absolutely excellent. Love this stuff. I remember the first time I cracked it open and, and smelled it. Yeah. It was just like maple syrup and Can pancakes on the nose. Yeah. Love, love, love this pour. Mm. And the reason this is pertinent to this blind tasting topic is that before we started doing many blind tastings ourselves, we didn't actually know that we liked wild turkey products no. all that much. No, I had no idea. Yeah. It's a very informative process and it honestly doesn't take a lot of work, a lot of effort or a lot of money to pull off. Yeah. It's become my favorite way of tasting. I'm not going to speak for you, but I think so. I some, think it's it's fun because you don't know what you're drinking yeah. and you really can take labels and names aside and which even for someone who is not like nerdy into that like myself that still does affect my perception like i remember a a thing we did i think it was one of our our practice videos mm -hmm. where oh, yeah. i ranked sazerac rye really low in a blind tasting and had i known it was sazerac i would have ranked it high because when i know it's sazerac i like sazerac right and that was really interesting to me um i was really disappointed in that but it was what it was, and now that we've done several of them, that's a consistent thing. Is Sazerac ranks fairly low for me when I don't know that it's Sazerac. Yeah, and same for me. Like I started doing head-to-head -head blind tastings, but they were single blind. Like I would pour two different products in the glasses, and then I would mix them up, and I'd stick little sticky notes on the bottom of them mm -hmm. to let like little labels to tell me what was what. And I would taste each of them, and I would be like, I like that glass better. And then I would look under there and see what it was. But the problem with that system is that when you know what's in the glass, then if I know Buffalo Trace is in the glass and I know there's certain notes I'm looking for, if I know there's mm. Knob Creek in the glass, there's certain notes I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. When I know what's in both glasses, it's easy to spot the difference if you have any familiarity with the products. Yep. I'm drinking this Russell's Reserve because we found out that we really, really like wild turkey products. I, I actually never gave wild turkey products the time of day. Did you ever buy a wild turkey product no. in the last 10 or 15 years? Nope. I didn't either. But we were doing these blind tastings. We take these little sample jars and we pour different things in them and label them on the bottom. On the bottom here. Just like that. And then we We'll put a number or a letter down there and then we'll write out a key. So we mix them all up. We select them at random as to what we're tasting. And then we would find out, do, I, do we really like what is in this vial here? Mm -hmm. Is it to our preference or not? And it was so funny to me how when we're tasting things totally blind and we're not looking at a bottle or two in front of us, yep. do we really like it as much as we thought we did? Sometimes I, yes. Sometimes yes, but sometimes, sometimes not. not. And that really helped us to 
spend more wisely. I reach for different bottles now if we're not filming and I just want to enjoy a pour of something. Mm -hmm. I reach for different bottles now than I did before we ever started doing blind tastings because yeah. my my taste and preferences have been really honed in mm -hmm. through this process. It's like capsuling your whiskey collection, which I'm super big into capsule wardrobes because yeah. I'm a girl and yeah. I mean, I just say I'm. Guys can be into capsule wardrobes too. That's true, yeah. that's true. So nonetheless, it's a really fun thing. This all started with me wanting to do a blind bracket. I got a few allocated bottles, half a dozen or so yeah. like allocated harder to find products. And I was like, what happens when we run out of these? And I can't get my hands on another one as easily. So I bought a whole bunch of sample jars and I bought a whole bunch of bottles of other things that were readily available. Mm -hmm. And I had some wild results. Like yeah. I picked Evan Williams bottled and bond over Blanton's. Uh, that was a really stunning one. It was a 32 bottle bracket, the elite eight, seven of the eight were readily available on the shelf products. Everything. Wow, seven? Every, Seven out of the eight were readily available. All the allocated products had gotten eliminated, but one. It Which one? E.H. Taylor Small Batch. Okay. But it lost in the Elite Eight. And what went on to win the bracket was Rare Breed. And it, Rare Breed actually beat out Russell's Reserve for the win. Oh. But they were so close. It really came down to a matter of just like a very, I mean, you could have flipped a coin. But you didn't know which one was which. I didn't know which one was you, which. You didn't even know you were drinking any of those. Well, when it came down to the final four, I knew what the final four pours oh, were. Okay. And so Russell's was on one side, Rare Breed was on the other. They both won out. And then I had to pick between those two as to which one my preference was. Out of 32 bottles, it came down to Rare Breed versus Russell's Reserve. Two wild turkey products. Crazy. I never, ever would have guessed that yeah. in years past. So this is super easy to do, way easier than you would think. Yeah. Absolutely. All you need is some sample jars, and we have 12 here in front of us. These 12, you can buy on Amazon for like $14 delivered to your front door. Yeah, They're not bad. Two ounce Boston rounds. By the way, everything that we talk about here will be in the description below, the video description. Mm -hmm. You can check it there. We have some labels here. We've got these Avery color labels, they just so happen to fit perfectly on the bottom of these two ounce sample jars. We have black and orange because what we do is we take a Sharpie and we write on the orange label what the pour is. We can You can write what the pour is, you can write a letter or a number and then put that on a, a separate answer key. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we take the orange label and we put it on top of the black label and then we stick that to the bottom of the glass because what will happen is if you only put the orange label on there, you can see through. You can see through it if you're in if you're not in a dark room, and that keeps it truly double blind. Yeah. So that's a good point to talk about the difference in single blinds and double blinds. Yeah. If we had two glasses here and we knew that one had bullet rye and we knew that one had Russell's Reserve and we just mixed them up, that's single blind. We know what's in there. We just don't know which one is which. Mm -hmm. But double blind is that you don't know what's in either glass. We don't know that there's bullet. We don't know that there's Russell's reserve here. It could be here. anything we have in our house. So right. when we do these matchups, Josh pulls from what we have in our house. And so at any given point, we could be trying any of the whiskeys we have in our house. So we know it's one of those, but there's a ton of them. So it's- Right. It's <laughs> our collection has swelled. Yeah. But if you don't have a big whiskey collection, you don't have a hundred plus bottles sitting around and you've got 12 bottles or you've got six bottles and you want to find out which one I want to buy again. Mm, yeah. If you're truly subjective and you can trust yourself, you don't have to worry about it. Just pour them all in glasses, try them, see what you like best. I feel like it's removing bias when you taste it blind. Yeah. If you, if, it's hard not to have bias. It can even come down to something as simple as a pretty bottle. Yeah. I mean, well, I would I would argue that that's a, a lot of the thing going behind Blanton's right now. They got a really pretty bottle, these different collectible toppers. It's a great looking bottle. It's decent whiskey. I'd rather personally drink Buffalo Trace for less than half the price that I can get off the shelf. It's hard if you're looking at a bottle of Buffalo Trace and Blanton's and you put them in glasses and you try both of them, if you have a disposition towards really liking that packaging of Blanton's, it's gonna influence you. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna hunt after it. Taking that out of the equation really serves you well for yeah. the future to find out, do I really wanna get this again or not? So what we do is we take these sample jars. Like I said, take your Sharpie, take your two stickers, stick them on there. They come with little funnels, pour into there, put your label on the bottom, 
make your key, and then do your do then, your tastings. Yeah. Draw at random, mix them up. Like we'll take them and we'll, you know, we'll. <laughs> well, and even mix them up so we don't know what's on what side. And then what happens is for us personally, our pool is so large that I pour the pairs and label them, mm -hmm. put them in the key, then Aaron then takes them and mixes them up. leave, and I take what he's poured and paired, and then I mix them up. So. And you don't even know what I poured. I don't know what you poured. And then what we do is we take an app, it's called Pretty Random, but you can use any randomizer. You can go to random.org. Yeah. If you've got six pairs, just go to random.org, put one through six, and hit randomize. And you know if it says three, one, two, three, you're drinking the third pair. It's as simple as that for us. Yeah. You can do this with paired pours like we do, which to us is the most interesting way to taste. But you can also do this with just individual pours. You can take 12 random pours that you have around the house, mix them all up, and just taste one at a time and yeah. see if you really like it. And then look on the bottom to see what it is and whether you actually liked it or not. Yeah. You can even try to identify it, although every time I try... It's never I, right. No. You will be surprised at how little you know about whiskey when you're tasting it totally blind. Yeah. Developing your palate takes some time. Yeah. It takes some practice. And when you're doing it totally blind and you don't have a frame of reference to say, oh, I've got a wild turkey product here. And I have a rye product. Which one is yeah. which? I mean, that's yeah. very, fairly easy for anyone who's had some. So. Yeah. So it, that's also part of the process and a new way to enjoy the hobby. And you can do it with a couple of stickies. $14 in sample jars and a Sharpie marker. The way that we do it, we think of interesting matchups yeah. that we have. Like maybe it's two budget rise against each other, or maybe it's two high proof bourbons against each other. Or maybe it's a budget high proof bourbon and a allocated high proof bourbon. Oh, those are some of our favorites yeah. because then it's like, okay, do we really prefer the allocated product? Yeah. Or is that the label influencing us? Yeah. Is it the hard to get factor influencing yeah. us? And that's so fun. Like I remember when I was doing that blind bracket mm -hmm. and then I found out that I picked Evan Williams bottled and bond, a $17 bottle of whiskey over Blanton's. I was, I remember major upset, major upset. <laughs> I had them seated. Blanton's was the top seed because it's what tons of people chase. And then Evan Williams bottle and bond was the bottom seed because it was the most inexpensive product. Yeah. And so Blanton's was one, Evan Williams was 32. And when I looked at the bottom and saw the one that I picked to win, it was 32. And then I knew that one was Blanton's. I was stunned. Yeah. I, I never would have known that had I not done the blind tasting. Yep. And then I would have thought I liked Blanton's decent enough and I would have kept going after more bottles mm -hmm. and asking for it at local stores. And it's just, it's not in stores. Yeah. Except your wife likes Blanton's. You do like Blanton's, so I'll still buy bottles for you if I have the opportunity to buy them at cost. Right, which I'm not but, gonna, I don't allocate yeah. buying things not at cost. Pers yeah. Personally, that's my personal preference. Yeah, I mean Blanton's is the perfect example here because Blanton's is a $60 bourbon that can go for 70 or 75 in a store if they're not gouging you too much, but there's stores that sell Blanton's for 150 or $200 yeah. or more. And that's ridiculous because it's not worth that. Yeah. The only thing well, you're paying for- Well, it's not for, worth it to you because that's, that's what fair. you found out. Yeah. Some To some people, it would be worth it. If they and really, really like it. That's the subjective nature of this. And I think that's is. why- I find that hard the, to believe. The blind but. tastings are fun because it really truly shows you what you like. You know, doesn't matter what your friends think, it doesn't matter what other whiskey people think, like it's what you like and that's what matters. Yeah, because this is subjective. Like, yeah. it's so weird to me and interesting also from a, just a psychological standpoint that we don't do this with food. If you're like, I don't really like broccoli. Nobody's like, how dare you not like broccoli? <laughs> yeah. But do you, you even know what broccoli is made? Do you made? even know what food tastes like? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but if you say you don't like a whiskey that someone else likes, all of a sudden, oh, they get watch their knicker, out. I mean, they get their knickers in a twist. Yeah. And 
they come at you like you've just insulted their mother. Come at you, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And that's a whole nother topic of people searching for validation and the money that they spend and the things they like and they want other people to that's like it too. That's another conversation for another day. That's another conversation for another day. Like what you like. Yeah. If everybody says what you like is the worst thing in the world, but you taste it and it just tastes like the sweet, sweet nectar that you know it to be, enjoy it yeah. and don't give a rip about what anybody else thinks. Yep. So people Cheers can, to that. Cheers to that. People can say whatever they want about wild turkey. We love wild turkey products in this house. So that's just the way it is. Yeah. So to us, this is the way that we like to do it. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you saw us singing at the top of the episode, <laughs> had to break out in a little song from time to time. Yeah. But this to us, it's the most fun way because yeah. it, it keeps you on your toes and it's a new way to enjoy the hobby for a little bit of work, a little bit of money. It's great. But not a lot of work and a lot of, not a lot of money. Not and it makes work. it a lot of fun. It makes it a lot of fun. You get a little work, little money, a lot of yields, a lot, a lot of, of fun. fun. Yeah. So you can't beat that equation. <laughs> that's that's bang for your buck right yeah. there. If you want to maybe have access to other whiskeys that you might not have access to, mm. then what you can do is you can check the video link below. You'll see our Patreon in there. We have a couple of tiers where we put together sample kits for you. You get eight of these jars. You get instructions on how to do blind tastings the way that we do them. And it gets to drill down into your personal preferences. And we'll even email back and forth with you to figure out what those personal preferences are. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a personal tasting consultation in some ways, except we're not pros. Yeah. We're just amateurs, probably just like you. We're just whiskey hobbyists. We're whiskey enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And we like to share that with other people. Yeah. So share the love. Share the love. So that's what this is all about to us. Whiskey is fun. It's to be enjoyed. You enjoy the pour that you have in front of you. You enjoy it with people that you care about. Mm -hmm. That At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And we have our tongue-in-cheek, objectively excellent subjective scoring rubric, which the title in and of itself, some people don't realize it's a tongue-in-cheek thing. Yeah. And that's fine. But we don't take any of this too seriously because it really does come down to personal preference. Yep. All right. So let's get into other stuff. Uh, do you have any other stuff this week? Yeah, do we have anything? We've got other stuff this week. Right. I mean, you're looking at some of it here, but in the description below, you'll see links there. Mm -hmm. Those are Amazon affiliate links. So like, it's, like we just said, there is Patreon information below. That requires a monetary commitment on your part to helping us out mm -hmm. for all the, the stuff that we're doing to, to create content. Provide value to you. And that's yeah. great. We love that and we appreciate that beyond measure for the people that yes. are our Patreons. If you want to support the channel without spending an additional dime whatsoever, other than what we might influence you to buy, like sample jars yeah. and Glencairn glasses and things like that, what an Amazon affiliate link is, is if you click one of the links below and you buy that product or any other product within 24 hours of clicking that link, we get a little bit of a financial kickback. From Amazon. For that. It's super small. It's one of these things that adds up over time, mm -hmm. but it does help more than you know. And yes. it doesn't cost you any extra. So look, you don't have to buy sample jars. You don't have to buy Glencairns. You can click the Glencairn link below. Then you can go buy- like Laundry detergent. Laundry detergent and toilet paper. It's a, a really interesting thing. And I think it's a cool thing for content creators that Amazon and other places offer something like this. I think Amazon's probably the best. Yeah. Not just because we do do a bunch of business <laughs> with Amazon here in this house. Dangerous. That Prime <laughs> membership. Oh. But I think it's, it's best because when you're doing an affiliate program through other people, then it's tied to their product mm -hmm. specifically. With Whereas Amazon, it's a, a lot of Am products, a lot of brands. Right. And we're telling you guys, like, we endorse these sample jars. We endorse these tasting yeah, glasses. Yeah, what we use. We use them. We enjoy them. We are happy with our money spent here, and we think you would be as well. So we're never going to put anything in our affiliate program links below that we don't feel like is something that you would enjoy yeah. and you would feel like you got your money out of as well. But that's it for this week. Erin, yeah. take us out of here. Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope you found it helpful in helping you create your own double blind situation. Um, if you liked today's video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, do the things. Um, we really just enjoy having this time with you. So keep coming back. Till next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers.